On this episode of the Rich Ad Poor Ad podcast, we have a special guest, Josh Marsden, who is the creator of the ARM5 formula, where he kind of coaches e-com businesses on scaling their ads while remaining efficient. We also kind of dive into the acquisition, the retention, and scaling up side of things and kind of what you need to know and how to create a marketing strategy for it. And on our financial side of things on how it's good to keep an extra line of credit and really have an, you know about two times your ad spend budget just in case you need to scale up or scale down a little bit. Make sure to tune in on this one. It's all marketing related. Don't miss it. Well, let me start with a result. So um, we had a client, for example, here in July, and this is uh, throughout July, they made $456,754 in revenue, and they only spent $43,238. Uh, and 42 cents. <laughs> so they actually made back 812% on every dollar spent on ads. And um, and this is a, you know, a company that has worked with us for some time. They've really had the ARM5 formula implemented and like truly dialed in. Um, but that's the type of results the ARM5 formula can get companies. We, we, we estimate that we do about 300 to 600% on average ROI, depending on how long they've had the ARM5 formula implemented into their e-commerce business. You're listening to the Rich Ad Poor Ad podcast, where we break down the financial principles that rich advertisers are deploying today to turn advertising into profit and get tons of traffic to their websites without killing their cash. These advertisers, agencies, affiliates, brands are responsible for managing over a billion dollars a year in ad spend. You'll hear about what's working for them today, their rich ads, and we'll roast their epic failures and crappy ads on the internet with poor ads. Let's get into it. We are back, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Rich Ad Poor Ad podcast, where we dive into what's working, what isn't working, and some cool financial tips. We got your host, Dylan Carpenter in the house, and Mr. Zach Johnson. What's good, man? Oh, dude, I'm doing good. Heck good. yeah. Well, sweet. We got a very special guest on today, Josh Marston. You know, he's a serial entrepreneur, the host of the e commerce performance marketing show, and kind of all in on the teaching, you know, ads for e com businesses, but mostly the creator of the ARM5 formula, which is a super juicy tactic we're going to be diving into today. So, without further ado, what's up, Josh? Hey, how's it going, guys? Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, man. I'm excited to have a recovering agency owner on the show. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. I'm I'm still licking my wounds from the past seven and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you're alive. <laughs> I know, that's I know. Cool. I survived and I thrived. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, man. Well, I, I'm excited to to dive into your transition, but give everybody a little bit up to speed on you know what you're up to now. I think I think most people listening probably know you as Josh Mars and you know the the Facebook ad agency guy, but you're on to some pretty cool new things. So get everybody up to speed. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I've been running uh, an agency since early 2013. Um, but as of uh, the publishing date of this uh, recording, uh, I have now transitioned out of that. And I am now helping e-commerce business owners apply my RM5 formula, which helps e-commerce businesses maximize their return on ad spend uh, by implementing nine key systems that I've recognized through my agency experience that every e-commerce business needs in order to maximize the ROAS. Uh, so I do that now um, with the RM5 Formula Accelerator. And then on top of that, I also have uh, some e-com businesses also that uh, I am managing and scaling through partnerships and uh, different uh, team members and things like that. So I'm really excited for what I'm doing right now today. That's Thanks. awesome, man. So let me get this straight. The RM5 Formula has nine tips in it? Nine systems, correct. Nine systems. All right, so five core systems and four bonus systems. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, the five stands for the five profit amplifiers. Oh, gotcha. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, but there's nine systems that, you know, I've recognized and that's what I help e-commerce businesses apply in my program. Yeah. You know, I really think that I feel like you, you really started to hone in and, and focus almost exclusively on e-commerce, maybe two, three years ago at this point is from when I started really noticing it. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I, I feel like that's done really, it's done wonders for you. Uh, I, I feel like that was a really solid move to to focus and apply your skills. In yeah, that thank platform. you. 
Yeah, no, I appreciate it, man. Um, yeah, it was uh, late 2017 when uh, you came on to the e-commerce success summit. That was essentially my pivot point when I decided to niche down into specifically e-commerce and and make sure that our marketing matched that as well. And since then, you know, yeah, we've had some massive gains, you know, in the agency. I mean, um, 2019 and 2020 um, ha- have had some tremendous results on the uh, the sales side and also the results side. Uh, with the agency, which is why I've been able to step out of the agency. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a good move, and um, I had no idea that you know COVID would happen. Nobody knew that would happen. And um, you know, looking back, you know, I feel like that uh, the universe led me to niche into e-commerce. This way, I was prepared for 2020 because e-commerce is booming right now. Oh yeah, I mean, especially with all the Black Friday, Walmart and Target not opening their doors. Uh, you know, with all the e-com ads I'm doing, I'm expecting just the floodgates to open. So I am so amped up about it. Yep, yep, yeah, Sam, totally. With your e-com brands, out of curiosity, what do y'all spend during the first three quarters versus that Q4? Is it a pretty substantial lift? Well, um, well yeah, definitely. I mean, fourth quarter is you know where clients, you know, in, in my past agency experience, that's where they really kind of go all in because they want to end the year on a good note, obviously. And they want to also spend as much money as possible. So this way they, you know, they look uh, nice to, uh, you know, their, uh, their government, whether they're U S Canada based, et cetera, you know, this way they can write off as much as possible. Um, I, as far as like amounts, I mean, I couldn't give you like a, a clear statistic, but typically the, uh, the budgets go up, I think around like 40% more or less, uh, mm-hmm. going into fourth quarter. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's gonna be, especially with the COVID year and the elections, who knows what's going to happen. But hey, take advantage of it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, is that uh, our ARM5 formula, too, it's really designed to build your top of the funnel consistently and keep building it. It's not like a, a typical ad strategy where you just go direct to offer. You know, it's really more of a full-fledged marketing strategy. And so going into the fourth quarter, Clients that have the Five formula are really prepared for it because they've got a, a, a massive warm audience that they can retarget and they can show their offers to. So I'm really excited for, for uh, previous agency clients, current Arm5 formula accelerator clients, because uh, they're, they're going to crush it here in the fourth quarter. Well, man, I'm getting amped up hearing about this. So, I mean, <laughs> let's go ahead and segue this bad boy into the Rich Ad segment. And, you know, what's working when it comes to the Arm5 formula? How does it all come together? And, you know, when it's all place together properly, how those results kind of turn out. Well, let me start with a result. So um, we had a client, for example, here in July, and this is uh, throughout July, they made $456,754 in revenue, and they only spent uh, (laughs) $43,238.42. So they actually made back 812% on every dollar spent on ads. And, um, and this is a, you know, a company that has worked with us for some time. They've really had the arm five formula implemented and like truly dialed in. Um, but that's the type of results the arm five formula can get companies. We, we, we estimate that we do about 300 to 600% on average ROI, depending on how long they've had the arm five formula implemented into their e-commerce business. Um, it really just comes down to, implementing nine key systems um you know it, it, you really have to maximize every click and lead and customer you're getting from digital ads to really see the greatest ROI from advertising and i know you guys know this cuz you guys are veterans um but uh, a lot of e-commerce businesses that are somewhat new to e-commerce that aren't quite at seven figures a year they don't really get that and uh they have a, a very limited view when it comes to how to use ads they really look at ads as getting customers, getting sales, um, and they, and they don't have this long life cycle, uh, strategy in their business. And they need that because when you have it, you know, that's when you can really dictate your cost per customer because you can acquire people cheaper. And then on top of that, you can maximize your revenue from your customers after you receive them as well. So I can go into these nine key systems if you want. I mean, I don't yeah. know if you want me to talk, but you know, oh, yeah, bring it, bring it on. Let's go ahead and shape it out because I'm kind of curious on this bad boy as well. Cool. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. So these nine key systems are acquiring customers cost effectively, which obviously everybody wants to do, uh, but it's also having good follow up systems, uh, good content marketing, uh, customer activation strategies, customer monetization strategies, an omni channel strategy, 
uh, budget allocation and affiliate utilization, and then ad scaling techniques as well, which is the last one, because once you have all those other systems, then ad scaling will, will really benefit the business because they've got the other eight systems in place and they're really seeing significant profit coming in uh, from their ad spend. So pop uh, quiz, Dylan, go ahead and repeat those back. Oh my God. I, I, <laughs> just I, 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 now, what I was going to mention, are these things, are they rolled out in sequences? Is it all at once? How do you kind of have that in play? Yeah, well, it depends on what's working, what isn't, you know, in a company that is working with me, you know, because if they have good customer acquisition, I mean, sure, we can optimize and we, and we will working together in my program, but they might might need some other of these systems implemented. And so I'll tell them to go through that module in my program instead of just going through it from uh, module one all the way to, you know, module nine. Uh, so it just really depends on the company that I'm working with and uh, what their strengths and what their weaknesses are as they enter into my program. What kind of questions do you ask before they even kind of go into your program to kind of get a really feel if it's a good fit there? Uh, I ask them like, for example, like, uh, I mean, simple stuff like, uh, how much are you making in your business right now per month? Uh, what are your biggest challenges right now in your business? And what I'm seeking here is I'm seeking, you know, I'm having a hard time getting advertising uh, to work or be profitable, or I'm having a hard time scaling, uh, which that's really like our, core customer. That's like our number one avatar. Um, when they say stuff like that, that's when I know I know I could really help them uh, with the ARM5 formula. That makes total sense. So, I mean, when it comes to the scaling side, are you just kind of more or less assisting on the digital marketing side? Do you help them with production saying, because, you know, we have a lot of, you know, individuals who love scaling more or less, but scaling is one thing, but can the back end of the business take it? Inventory, shipping, is that kind of something you dive into with the actual Arm5 formula or is that something more on the actual clients themselves? Yeah, it's on the clients themselves, like uh, operations and fulfillment and sourcing. You know, that's something that they have to have like intact and they have to have those systems re really optimized this way they can scale. Um, I have friends and colleagues that are experts in that stuff. I'm not, I'm more <laughs> of an expert in scaling on the marketing side. Oh, yeah. No, I totally get that. Because, yeah, I've definitely scaled some, then realizing, oh, hey, we've been out of inventory. And I'm like, well, <laughs> that's it. Oh, crap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Well, shoot, that's quite a case study right there for the ARM5 formula. This episode is brought to you by Funnel Nash's ad card, the only charge card exclusively for your digital ad spend. And if you're an ad agency that manages seven or even eight figures a year in media and ad spend for your clients, and you're looking to double your profits over the next six to 12 months, then check out AdCard. See, the typical agency model is this. You charge 10% of your spend, and you make 10 to 20% margin at the end of the day. So that's really one to 2% of your client's spend that is profit in your business. The easiest way to double that is to really find a way to earn in that one to 2% cash back of the card that is on file of your clients' ad account. And before ad card, what you had to do was invoice all your clients for their ad spend up front, which is really difficult on a cash flow basis and very difficult ask. And then you had to put the card on your own Amex or whatever card of choice to get that level of value back into your business. With ad card, it's entirely different and streamlined. You simply get your clients on ad card and make yourself the agency of record and you'll get the cash back as long as you're managing the ad spend. It's a great way to double your profit without doing any additional work. Check it out at FunnelDash.com. Now, when it doesn't go as planned, let's dive into this this poor ad segment and what kind of happens when it doesn't kind of all come together more or less. Yeah, well, you know, when an e-commerce company is struggling, let's just put it that way, when they're struggling to get ads to work, uh, they probably don't have their marketing strategy really dialed in where they know who they're speaking to. They know what message works. Um, they don't have like a good funnel or a good website that's really optimized to convert. Um, or if they are getting customers, but they're like around break even or slightly above that, maybe up to 200% ROAS. Uh, that's still really not enough because, you know, as we all know, a typical e-commerce business maybe has like a profit margin around maybe 20, 30% more or less, you know? So, um, so they really have to optimize the back end, and, um, and, th and they do that through implementing a lot of the systems that I went over with the ARM5 formula, because once those systems are in place, 
then they're able to really properly monetize their customers. They're able to properly monetize uh, their leads that are on the maybe fence or clicks that are on the maybe fence. Um, and then their ROAS goes up and then they can start really scaling their ad spend. Um, obviously, there's some techniques there, uh, which I go over in my program. So this way they can do it smoothly. But uh, once those systems are in place and the ROAS goes from break even to 200% and then goes up to, let's just say, 400, 500% ish or more, then, you know, those scaling their ad spend makes a lot more sense at that point because their numbers are really dialed in. Most definitely. So, I mean, when it doesn't go as planned, what are some of those nightmare stories? You know, is it a <laughs> big loss? Is it, you know, break even at worst? Or is it something where people have, you know, taken a beating for, you know, one or two months before it kind of kicks back up and, you know, gets optimized more or less? Yeah, well, you know, I help people get out of that situation. So I've never had, I don't have any stories about people getting into that situation um, with my help. But, um, you know, some of the companies that I've worked with, I think that, you know, it just, it just comes down to, like, I've seen people just really just trying to drive traffic using uh, digital ads, whether it's Facebook or Google, but usually it's like Facebook that I seem to attract probably because I've authored two books on Facebook advertising. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and typically like what I hear and see is just people not getting Facebook ads uh, to work um, above that 200% ROAS um, or not at all. Um, Cause I, that's who I really truly help is in my program is I help companies that aren't at seven figures a year. And, you know, those people typically aren't uh, getting their Facebook advertising to to work well or work at all. Um, and typically what I see with that is it's just their strategy. You know, it's it's their strategy. Um, I think that's what you're looking for here is their strategy is so much about direct to offer, um, driving people, you know, to their website, for example. And, um, and they might get their numbers to work a bit. Like I said, maybe break even 200% at the most, but that's not going to help them really, really scale um, unless they've got some of these other systems in place to really maximize that ROI and also to reduce uh, the CPA as well. And it's because their strategy is just so uh, simple and singular when it comes to trying to get customers from Facebook ads that they're not thinking about an entire top to bottom marketing strategy because a top to bottom marketing strategy, as we all know, is all about generating that awareness first and foremost and then moving people down to that engagement and then moving people down to that conversion and then moving people down to that monetization. And with Facebook ads, to be able to really, really scale, you have to have that comprehensive approach uh, because Facebook's algorithm rewards you when you do that. Um, and so if you're using, for example, content at the top, whether it's blog articles you're driving people to or whether it's video views, that's going to greatly reduce your cost per click and cost per view when you're getting people into your funnel, uh, which is going to reduce also, you know, your CPA as well when you go to convert them too. So, you know, that's that's what I've seen happening with a lot of e-commerce businesses that are struggling is their strategy isn't comprehensive, taking into account a real marketing top to bottom strategy with their Facebook ads. It's very much just straight to conversion, straight to conversion, straight to conversion. And unless you have like a really killer offer or you have really, really good messaging um, and, you know, obviously targeting to match it, or you're writing a trend, it, it could be really challenging to, to do that. Like some people have success with it, but that success is a uh, few and far in between versus if you really want to be able to tip the scales um, in your favor, you want to really have a comprehensive top to bottom marketing strategy because that's fundamental when it comes to Facebook advertising. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, you're never going to have a one hit wonder. So I think understanding the customer lifetime journey, whether it's a content marketing approach or direct response approach, the amount of variables are just unreal. Yeah. I mean, the call comes down to that marketing strategy and, you know, coming full circle. So I, mean, I think that's a killer, killer area of opportunity there. Yep. Yeah, absolutely, man. Now we're going to dive into Zach's favorite portion of the podcast, the more financial principle side of things. So we've had a lot of agencies talk about, shoot, transferring, you know, credit card points to Bitcoin, um, scaling ads, you know, forming partnerships, you know, what kind of financial tips would you bring? And one kind of question I would actually have, you know, especially with these e-com brands scaling up this season is how do you kind of have a conversation of letting the client know, hey, if we're spending, you know, 100K, we're looking to boost it up 40%. 
Do you have that cash flow? Do you have the inventory to kind of sale, scale this more or less? How do you kind of have those conversations with those clients? Yeah, so, you know, our clients, uh, for the most part, I mean, they, they typically have good solid lines of credit, but if they don't, we definitely recommend that they reach out to, you know, Funnel Dash and check out Ad Capital, um, or, you know, there's some alternative options out there, but, uh, you know, I've been a big advocate of Funnel Dash and what they offer. Zach, I'm giving you some uh, kudos <laughs> here. So good, job, good job with your business. <laughs> um, keep but, going, uh, keep going. We'll, yeah, we'll yeah, yeah, keep go going. for another two hours as long as you stay on this topic, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so simply, you know, um, you know, I always, uh, you know, recommend that someone have like a, a good solid line of credit that is um, equal to or up to two times their typical ad spend budget. And so if their ad spend budget is like 50,000 a month, then they want to have a line of credit of 50,000 to 100,000 to be able to really like maximize the fourth quarter. Mm. Um, and then going into the fourth quarter, and this is more tactical, but, uh, and I know this isn't financial, which is the nature of the question, but <laughs> going into the fourth quarter, it's, <laughs> it's all about building up that warm audience, um, you know, because uh, fourth quarter is when all the sharks, you know, all the big fish, the Walmarts, the Targets, um, you know, the big brands of the world, that's when they really, throw in, you know, their ad spend into digital ads thinking, oh, it's fourth quarter. This is the time I can make a ton of money. And, you know, who knows what the ROAS is? You know, I have no idea, but, you know, they can get away with it because, you know, they're an established brand. They've got deep pockets and they probably have a really solid customer lifetime value too. Yeah. And so like the typical business that is, you know, let's just say below eight figures, they, to really prepare and have the most success going in, going into the fourth quarter, They've got to really have a, a solid top of the funnel built, and uh, they also have to have like a, a solid uh, budget as well, whether it's uh, their own cash or whether it's a line of credit through ad capital. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> you know, it really can help them, you know, prepare for the fourth quarter. So, so they have money to dive into. You mentioned, of there, you mentioned <laughs> sure, that you ahead. recommend that they have 2x their, their monthly ad spend. I think that's an interesting metric also kind of a good rule of thumb we haven't heard that uh before on the show walk me through your your thinking there is it as is it as plain as day as because you're going to spend twice as much money on ads going into november or like how did you you know what's the experience that ultimately led you to that two extra monthly ad spend in terms of a line of credit yeah 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 no problem so you know, we just want to make sure that we don't have limitations, you know, on the ad spend side. Because if we, see, if we see going into, let's just say mid to late November and things are working really, really well, then we want to be able to scale aggressively. So this way we can help a client maximize their profits and their revenue from that point all the way until the end of the year. And so we've always told clients over the past few years, like, you want to have ideally up to two times your monthly ad spend budget that doesn't mean where we're going to necessarily spend it um but we did have a client for example last year that we told this to and uh we went into black friday and we just crushed it like we saw uh 330,000 uh in sales during that week uh which was awesome um and yeah, i think that they spent like maybe i'd have to i'd have to pull up a report but I mean, their ROI was at least 200, 2000, I'm sorry, 2000% 2, uh, during that, that week of Black Friday last year. I'd have, to, I'd have to pull up like a dashboard image to see like exactly their stats. But, um, but that was the reason why we were able to do that, well, though, was because we advised that client to make sure that they had a line of credit ready because that allowed us to aggressively scale their ad spend during that Black Friday week. And that's how we crushed it for them. Mm. Mm. I love it. I love it. Josh, you've always been an amazing guest, man. It's so awesome to have you on the show. Tell everybody a little bit about uh, how we can support you, what you're up to next, and uh, how everybody can get in touch. That yeah, sounds great. Yeah, I appreciate you guys uh, having me on the show. Uh, you can always uh, follow me and find out more about myself at joshmarsden.com or uh, the arm5formula.com. Um, and then you can also check out my show, which uh, we uh, published to all major social media channels, you know, YouTube, Facebook, plus we even uh, publish it as a pure audio. So you can go to iTunes, for example. Uh, so check out the e-commerce performance marketing show as well. Awesome. Thanks so much, Josh. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Thanks for watching.
thanks so much for listening to another episode of the Rich Ad Poor Ad Podcast. If you're like me and listen to podcasts on the go, go ahead and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and richadpoorad.com slash podcast. And if you absolutely love the show, go ahead and leave a review and a comment, share with a friend. If you do, take a copy, screenshot of it, email me, zach at funnel-dash.com, show me you left a review, and I'll give you a free copy of the Rich Ad Poor Ad book. To learn more about the book, go to richadpoorad.com. To leave a review, go to richadpoorad.com slash review. Thanks again.